We will call to order the meeting of the Stony Brook Community Development District. This is uh, Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. The time is 9.02 a.m. And we'll let the record reflect that Supervisors Simonson, Olive, and Huff are present in person and constituting a quorum. Uh, do we have any supervisors on the conference call? Chris? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Adam? Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. okay. Consider a motion right now to allow the continued participation by conference call of Supervisors Brady and Dalton, uh, noting exceptional circumstances. Can I make that motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys are valid. Thank you. Thanks for joining in. Hey, real quick, Adam, how's the weather over there? Are you ready? Good. Good. Enjoy. He's in Wales. Okay. Um, public comments? Do we have any comments? Sure. Come on up. Hi, my name's Kathy Adair. I've lived here for over 23 years at 21617 Wyndham Run. Okay. I was here last October with the same problem. I am back. Um, on June 7th, I sent a check to the CDD regarding the landscaping water of $30.25. Recently, just last week, I got another bill for $14.05. On Monday, I got another bill for $6.66. My in October, when I was here last year, my water had been turned off since June. I had a credit balance, so every time I was billed, they drew from that credit balance. I ended up with no credit balance. And then we went through a period where there was no card sent to any of us. I understand that. That's why I got the $30.25. I have pictures of my uh, meter. My meter is buried in the ground. It cannot be read. My neighbor and I dug it up yesterday to read my meter to see what it was. You cannot find the dial inside there. We scooped out loads and loads of dirt and we still cannot find the dial to read the meter. How is my meter being read? Is it being read um, cyberspace or whatever you do. What is your address again, please? 21617 Wyndham Run. I'll have someone go out and check that. John, okay, can you I that? really appreciate it because this is quite annoying. Okay. I'd, rather be here. I'd rather be anyplace else but here complaining about this. There's, there's no reason for this to be this way. I do have pictures, so I'm glad to send them to anyone that would mm -hmm. like them. Well, John will have the staff go out and take well, a look at it. But I, and I understood the last time John was going to take care of this for me. That was last October. I understand that Terry Mary Field, his has been taken care of. I saw that on Facebook. Uh -huh. um, and I appreciate all that you do, but for Pete's sake, <laughs> this has got to stop. I realize that this company that you're using, there are probably very few that do this service. But no one has come to read my meter. You can see around that meter someone's footprints if they had been there because it's all dirt. Well, that's, that's not necessarily true. The rains fill these boxes on a constant basis. This base. is Vincent Fleck, though. Man, I've read these boxes for 10 years. I know how they fill up when they get dirty. I, I understand it. And it happens every time it rains. you got a lot of boxes you got to dig up and you got to get to the meter. And then the next rain, it'll bury it again. I mean, sometimes they're full of water. When well, rain. why is my box so low and my neighbor's that's, box? Is that's just how they install them when, when they installed them 10, 11, 12 years ago. Well, can I, they, I don't know. Can I get either a new box or a new meter? That's not going to do anything. A new box, a new meter, it's just, I mean, that's not going to solve the problem of that area. Usually, I don't know where your box is, but a lot of times you're in between it's houses. In a swale. In it's in a swell. Right. And that, yeah, that's, I, a, that's I a water flat point, you know? I understand that. I do understand that. But for all this time period, I've been told that my meter has been read. And it is. Yeah. I don't believe that, John. I, I disagree. We're still... Someone I, is not telling the truth. We're still having issues. Um, I don't know how many homes, but... 
from the last two, three months, everything has been read perfectly to a T. Okay. So, I, I mean, and we're still working with the water, the building company now. Um, we're having some issues at the pump house. Come to find out there's, you know, Chuck, I don't know if you know this, but the number of the pump house isn't right. So we got the new pumps in August, or in September, and, and Vivian was telling me that the number that she got is almost way too high. I said, Anna Vivian, we're expecting a large water bill for the golf course because mm -hmm. it's been nine months. And she's saying something like 50, 60,000. I'm like, we're thinking more like 100. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So our estimates. And then, so, and not to go off topic on you real quick, but not to digress. Um, so I get an email from uh, Swift Mud, Lee County's to redo the water plant. So there's, they need me to get some numbers from some wells, flow numbers, so they can judge how to help us best when they're down, because they're not going to be able to give us as much water next year. All right. So I go to do that, and I get with um, Metro, and I say, hey, I need some, I need some help with these numbers. Uh, some of these wells aren't reading right. We need to get them electric, electrically. We need to get them going again, and so I can get these numbers. And then we started doing some math, and. Uh, the gentleman, Stephen Comer from Swiftwood called me. He's like, well, you know, historically, you guys used roughly about 40 million gallons, community-wise, a month. I said, Steve, we haven't, the pumps are saying we've used 120 million in nine months. So I paused, right? So we knew something was, we knew something was off. Um, luckily, I was able to find out there's, the way the new pumps are, there's two legs where there's three pumps here and three here, and they both have a meter here. One of them's not sending the information to the computer, to the screen. It's reading it there, but it's not adding it with that and sending it. Well, I realize that. Um, we've lost a VFD, a new VFD that's under warranty, but they're coming out this week to fix it. In turn, we're going to look at this and see what's going on. So I may have a bigger number to give Anna Vivian for the overall community part, you know, that we got it, um, which, because they're like, John, this number doesn't seem right. They're, they're kind of worried, you know, they were, and I was trying to do my best last week to go over with them. Um, and then I realized that. But as far as all the homes, there are still some homes that they're having trouble with. But I think for the most part, you know, for the last 60 days, 90 days, we've been on point with the numbers. Yeah. Everything. So I'll have one of John's staff will come out and look at it. I'll, I'll send Brian, I'm going to send Brian a text right now and say, please go read this meter and okay. take a picture of the box. You know, because I will tell you, with the rain the other day, mine filled with water, and Kenny went out and cleaned it off. And he's reading, reading, I mean, we have to read meters tomorrow anyway, we're yeah. starting to actually read for this month. So, I'll be home all day today, and tomorrow morning I'll be home. Okay. Okay. But I, I really appreciate if okay. something is done this time. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Usually. But as far as like keeping the box dry or not full of water or oh. mud, that's just... Okay. That, that's a, it yeah, would that's be nice if it would be up higher so that it does not flood and fill Or a better location in a higher spot or no, whatever. But that's changing that's, all the pipes. That's, and that's all, yeah, all okay. the, I, all know, the It's very frustrating for me. Very, very. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's been frustrating for a lot of people for a long time. And yes, hopefully it has been. <laughs> we're getting, that, getting, we're getting back on track. Okay, I'm going to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. Um, Jeff, no, John, golf course superintendent, John. All right, got a laundry list of things. Um, start with the palm tree in the neighborhood, that's for the community. That just got taken care of a couple weeks ago. All the palms, on the roadways. Uh, we're putting in some new flowers, some bankas here next week. Okay, we, I have gotten several here on um, next door, whatever that Facebook thing is, complaining that we're pulling out good flowers. No, well, we are in a they sense, work but and, and we, we can't replace what has went bad right. and then have them match up. Right. The, the, the flowers we use, the soft patients, um, American Farms is the place we get them from. They're carrying them through the summer this year because there's such a high demand and some people want them. They're not really a summer flower. <laughs> But if you can get them established early enough in spring and, and decent weather, you'll be fine. Right. We did that, but we had some irrigation issues where some irrigation got clogged with sediment and they weren't right. And then the heat in some areas got, they just got whacked. You know, yeah. We can't bring new ones in, the little ones in now, and expect them, they won't have. Yeah. But we can do vincas, they're half the price, so we're bringing those in. Okay. Um, and don't get us through until October. Okay. Same, that'd be pretty much the same colors. Same colors. Much the same colors. Um, Tom, it seems like we, we change these out frequently. 
We are, we're on schedule for three times a year, yeah. Well, it seems we like do. a lot more than that. Yeah, lately it's been four, maybe five last year. It seems like there's something we can put in there that we can change them out all the time. Bushes, like shrubs? Yeah. Well, it's something greener <laughs> that, that would last year round that you wouldn't have to replace all um, the time. Maybe add some flowers occasionally, but. I, I need to go back up to the, the fountain, too. I think I think we're still getting the chlorine splash again yeah. in the center. Um, but but the other ones, like by the, the guard shack, I was irritation getting clogged. We went up there. Mm -hmm. um, May, I mean, I think maybe at the fountain, the front fountain, originally there were shrubs there in yeah. the very beginning of I, I don't know. I mean, may, I, maybe we now that that sidewalk's going to be put in, maybe we can redesign it some way, somehow. There's not a lot of room up there. I now. think we should because the flowers never seem to do good there with the splashing in the wind. Um, it's rather, a river rock or something right there. I, yeah, I mean, I'd like to put something nice. I mean, I know it gets blocked from certain angles, but still it's a frontage, you know? Do you think if we just put river rock up there? I mean, I know that the residents aren't going to like would, it, yeah, but... Yeah, I don't think they'd be too happy. No, it. but the bottom line is that, I mean, the flowers... Well, I think we would have to put some kind of shrubbage or foliage. Okay. Whether well, it be something that... You know, maybe gives you some color, you know, like a fountain grass or something that changes throughout the a year. A fountain grass would be nice there. You know, muley grass, they get real mm -hmm. purple, you know, and you put a lot of color in them. Could you look to see if... Absolutely. Could you, rather than putting the flowers back in... In the front fountain. In the front fountain. Let's um, do... I've already ordered them for the front, so... Okay. Uh, think about it. Yeah. Yeah, let me think about that. Okay. Um, um, maybe I'll just call. I don't know. I just don't want to take too much time and figure something out and then rush it and put something in there. Just so, so, okay. You know? All right. Let's put the flowers in for now, but no in October. I have a good start. idea. Have, have a good, good idea of what December. we're going to do and, yeah. and put the muley grass or, or bushes or something else in that we don't have to keep changing and that the chlorine's not going to. And maybe we, we put rock behind it and maybe that'll. I don't know. It just needs a colorful contrast. You got, you know, you got these purple, small foliage. I don't even know what they are. I'm not an expert on all this stuff, but something along the color of that that would have a nice contrast. That yeah, that's tends really like a green grass. grass or a red fountain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something okay. like that. So, so let, let's continue with the flowers for now, and then October, let's change that up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, also, we're doing the new landscaping up there by the uh, backdrop. Percent. Yes. I'm waiting. Did they get the did they get the uh, podium? Yes, they okay. did. So we we're going to wait till they got that before we did it. Because uh, they might need to use that area to load it. Right. And then we have to take the signs off that old bolt. And now it's ready to go so I can move that. Okay. Yes. Good. So yeah. if you could move that this week, that would be great. Yes. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Up there at the bag drop, you know that piece you added? Yeah, that small three-foot piece of concrete. There's a spot in front now that is still dirt. We're going to landscape that. Well, the trouble is. Well, no, on our path. Didn't they want a path? They never put the stones. The old path comes up, and then where you add it on, it's dirt right there. It's a mud hole now at the rain. Is there any way we can put concrete in there and go out to where you added the piece and blend it in somehow? Yeah, yeah. We'll look at uh, adding some concrete there. It's, it's splashing up on, the, on that new podium, and you're going to be walking in mud. Gotcha. If we can do that, and then uh, are you still going to put a path there for them? Yes, they want to be able to ask for a path okay. so they can walk out to the cars, in case they're like three or four cars deep okay. during season when they're busy. Okay. Yeah, but I'd like to get rid of it, but we need to keep the signs and those signs. You know, um, are they attached to the current background stand? Yeah, but I'd like to have a post so those signs are all listed. And you know, um, and if we can, I'm almost thinking if we can incorporate that right into the landscape part of it. I'll leave that up to you, John. But we need. And one was um, no coolers on the course. One was authorized golfers. There were three of them. And the other thing um, for the. Um, club champions, um, we're not going to have the parking spaces. I want to somehow put those signs, you know, have three posts to put the signs to acknowledge those people. Um, 
because we're not doing little. We are. We're we're not doing the parking spaces. No designated. No designated parking spaces anymore. But we're still going to do the signs to designate the champions. And the reason being is that uh, the prior owner actually said you could have those spots, but they need to be used for wounded warriors only, which never was the case. And um, quite honestly, since we had the patio, we really do need the extra parts and spaces and not designated. So yeah. with that being said, maybe we can just take those posts and somehow put them over by the garden area. You know, ask Danny, because I, I talked to Danny about wow. it. We were okay. talking about where we could put those. But those three spots need to come away. And um, those signs somehow need to be posted there so that they're um, we can see them all because those are the three signs that we definitely need. Okay. Club champion and wounded warrior. Well, we well we don't need to make it a wounded warrior anymore because they're not going to be parking spaces. But that's what um, the prior owner had said. Yes, you can have those for that, but it must be for these people. Yeah. So we're just going to designate just by a sign. Just move the posts over to the garden area, mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, you know, maybe we can get a post to put the three signs on. I don't know. Okay. I, I think one post with those three signs and then the three. Okay, so where Danny thinks that they should, would best be. Sure. Okay, thank you. So if, if the parking places are being, are not going to be there, what are you, what are you going to put there? Maybe I missed. Those are just regular parking spaces. Oh, we need okay. more. Oh, said they weren't going to be, okay. No, there won't be designated gotcha. parking spaces just, for the champions. Okay. We'll just have the signs. Um, because we really need more parking spaces. It's going to open up about five or six spots. Yeah, right? especially. Yeah. No, I understood. I, I, yeah. I mean, I misunderstood. Are okay. we moving the handicap over? Uh, I know there's, there's, there's seven. We may add one more. Okay. But the handicap spots have been put in from way over there to two here, five here, and we nice. may add one more. It looks nice. That's it looks real. They, they, really nice. they did a real good job. Pretty good job. So. We'll be landscaping that, we'll re in that area up here soon. Okay. They did the curving and all that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, John. Okay. Let me keep up with the kind of separate cover. We'll go with golf course. Um, so, Carter Fence, uh, there are the people doing the railing on the back patio. Uh -huh. and, uh, they sent me an email now. They need a survey. Um, uh, I don't think they need a survey company out there. Maybe like a drawing. And I, I believe I sent this to them. And they, but they've already sent me a rendering of what the of the back patio with with pictures. So I have Leslie working on that currently, trying to figure okay. out exactly what they're doing. Superior Fence, who is doing the car barn, has the permit. They're waiting for it physically, um, which I would think they could be emailed this day and age, but I guess not. Um, and um, and Carter Fence also came out and did a loop around the perimeter looking for the worst areas to take pictures and document and they haven't responded back or given us anything but I'm still waiting. That was about a week and a half ago they did that. Okay. Um, we're currently on the back gate working. You see yesterday they took out that fence and everything. Okay. They're, they're, they're starting to clean that up. Um, that's going pretty smooth. Uh, thanks. So back, back to the wells on 10, we have a couple wells, Chuck, like four or five. There were six, but two on the permit or out of usage. Um, and so but we, we have to get a flow rate from these wells. I guess on the permit it says that they're rated for X amount of gallons. Once 250, once whatever. So Mr. Colbert wanted me to go out there and run them for a minute, test them, get that number, and give it back just to make sure that they're within range. Right. Um, and two of them work. So I called Bob Lee because that's who Metro uh, recommended they did the pump house. Um, they're supposed to come out this week, put new tombstones and you know everything. A couple of them are in pretty bad shape as far as the outside uh, electrical. Oil. Uh, I I don't ever know if these have been used as far as all, long as I've been here. So it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Um, to get those running again. Um, and like I said, there's that issue of. You know the demand, the usage, and the, uh, of what's been used throughout the whole pump house uh, since uh, September. We have the number, we have the actual number, so that's a good thing. But I got to get with Anna Vivian and say, hey, you know, I hate to throw a wrench in your system. But yeah, there's a much bigger number that we got to go off of. I'd say I, I don't think she really cares. She just wants the number. That's yeah. All. So she can uh, do the math and, and get the bill out for the golf course. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, just give her the number, John. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just found this out last week. Like I said, I was working with her. And I was working with her on it. I'm like, okay, I got her the number three or four times. But then when Stevens was like, yeah, you guys historically use about 40 gallons. I'm like, yes, yeah, if I know I'm a golf course can use a million gallons a night if you run full. You know, I'm like, that's a low, low number, you know. Um, yeah, she, and then she just needs the number, that's all. I mean, for two new board members, what that is is because the whole system's intertwined between the residential, which is metered, and the golf course, which is not. It's mm -hmm. essentially a math you know, formula where you take the total usage, deduct that, that actually went out through buildings, red meters, and there's actually a factor for line loss. I think it's 10%. And the difference becomes the bill for the golf course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just get that to us. Yeah. So we can get the bill and Absolutely. cry. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what else? Um, the AC in the shop, our maintenance building, has taken a crap. We need a new one. I've already had Kobe come out. Um, they're going to provide us a quote. He said it's probably going to be around the four to six thousand dollar range to get a whole new um, handler. And but they had talked about replacing some or doing a whole new one. They, they did. Said, they said, let's look at it. They put the dye in and came back a week later and said, let's see how bad it is and see what's going on. Um, and then we could see it was leaking pretty bad. Yes. Um, it's original. You know, yeah, he's like, at I this said, point, just go and get the new one. Replace it. it's time to replace it. Plus, we're going to take it. It's in a cat. It's in a, I don't know if you've seen this, where sometimes they're in the wall and they're yeah. in like a, like a corner. We're going to get rid of that so we can have access to it at all times and just um, and then, because then we got to redo the floors. It leaks so bad, we ruin the floors, the base. But we had mushrooms growing out of the baseball. Yeah. You know, in one of the offices. Um, Did you put them on your salad? No. Okay. That's disgusting. It's pretty gross. Um, but no, I, Chuck, I said just go, you know, when yeah, Kobe comes, just go for the whole new one. I mean, I'm not going to band aid yeah. something 25 years old. Probably should have done it when we did the pump. Yeah. Right. When the was yeah. 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 Um, and then we'll, did we capitalize that? Um, and then the floor too, because they will have to redo the floor. Scary. Um, right now we're deep tiny airification in, putting down new sod, as you can probably see. Mm -hmm. um, that's going pretty well. I wasn't here yesterday. Um, on a sad note, my mother passed Sunday, um, kind of unexpectedly, expectedly something like that. Um, but, uh, so I wasn't here yesterday. But Todd's doing a great job. Leslie, everybody's really put together, done a great job. Um, so down, really um, number Fort Ridge, uh, we put the metal down. It's a lot better than what it was. I mean, for now, that's you know, I know it was rough, like going over that thing. So we put the expand. Uh, have you ridden over it? When did that go down? Went down a couple of weeks ago. It's been down. I mean, tacked down. We had it down temporarily just to see. I played Saturday. I don't remember. So that's great, right? Yeah. yeah great well, day. there were a couple other bridges that pop up. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Almost every bridge had a pop up. Yes. Right. Um, like nine, so especially. I mean, you could blow out a tire on number nine. On that bridge. the long bridge? Yeah. Right at the as you go as you enter the bridge on the T box. If somebody's not paying attention, they're gonna. I've fixed a couple of tires already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, so we're in the heart of budget season. Uh, next month, I'll probably have everything ready to go. I just need to know from a board perspective, uh, you know, last month the cost of the, or, you know, inflation was like 4% or 5%. This month it's at 4 but Last year it was 8.5%. So I just, where do we want to be at when it comes to pay increases for staff? You know, what kind of percentage um, when we go to do that? I didn't. You know, we took a pretty big jump last year, didn't we, about raising the minimum wage? I don't know what percentage that was, but we just brought everybody up. Uh, um, wasn't a big jump. Well, it was probably ten percent or more. Wasn't it? No. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, I think so. It was two dollars at least, least per per person per hour. Okay. Because um, I know the least person was at thirteen. We raised the minimum to fifteen. Right. And bumped everybody up two dollars a week. Yeah. So we've already had a pretty significant increase last year. I'm not opposed to compensating staff, but um, that was a pretty big jump and a, and a big hit to the overall right. budget. So, so uh, we're saying nothing at all, or are we saying like the oh, no, cost I of living? We what I'm saying, if you want to go off the inflation rate, or the standard is like three percent, right? Three and a half percent. I just didn't know if you wanted to take it to the four, or to keep it at three, or you know. Well. 
they have done a great job. And based on the way things are going and, and staff leaving. Um, we did lose a um, staff member uh, last week to immigration policy. Um, we won't be getting back. No. And, and I think uh, based on you know some of these other businesses where they're just losing people, I, I do want to give them an increase. Um, I mean, I'm okay with the three percent, you know. So, but I, I do think we should give them something because, you know, we, we have the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah. So when I do these numbers, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be that's a big increase in the cost to play golf. Yes. So we certainly will be able to should have the revenues to support increasing in staff compensation. Yeah. I would assume. So. Jeff, are you okay with the three percent? Yeah. Okay, Adam, you're doing working with the budget. So can you work that into it, please? Yeah. I, I, the biggest thing I think is we need to increase our revenue to offset, and I think three percent is, is is maybe even on the low end. Okay. I think we really, I think, I think we really need to ramp up our revenue, and we need, we need to account for increasing costs. We need to make sure we keep our business works. But yeah, I fully support three percent. Okay. And Adam, I'll ask you to work with Jeff and John on um, when they come up with their employee, you know, the benefits. And I know you're working with Jeff with regard to the uh, increase in the. Uh, and then the, the rates, thank you. Lost that word. Um, yep. Okay, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll leave that with you three to work together on that. And and Jeff, um, I'd like Ty Lohr and Ty Lur to work with you so that they both know what's going on. No problem. Okay. And Jeff, you, I mean, John, you've got Leslie and Todd. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, just so that, that, that more than just one of you knows what, what's going on there. Okay, thank you. Other than that, if you have any questions for me, I really don't have. Um, it's really it. Um, I do have a doctor's appointment. My first post off on my back surgery today at uh, like 12, so okay. I might have to leave. Okay, hopefully you're like done. Like 11:30, back. We'll be done. How's your back doing now? It's doing pretty good. I've had no problem so far. I'll find out today, right? We're gonna take X-rays. Really See where good. you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do want to say that Leslie, who is the new admin support, has been doing an amazing she job. Yep. She really is a, a great asset. She so, is. And so she please tell her that she was acknowledged yeah. at the meeting. Okay. John, Jeff. I got a question for John. John, can you um, give me an idea or give us an idea of what the plan is for the, uh, the edges of the lakes and tee boxes and all that? It was really long. Uh, the grass is really long around the edges everywhere yeah. when I played Friday. And yeah, we haven't been out in Lord Rough, and even Todd was telling me today, like, he's like, we haven't been out yet, but we're going to go out. It's just, I mean, it's that time of year, we're low on staff, we're low on time. I mean, you know, it's, we got two, usually we got people going out as two mowers, you know, and just doing the best, the best we can to get around. You know, and rough is one of those things that takes a hit, right? It's tees, green, it's greens, tees, fairways, rough, and then everything else. And you try to make, you know. Yeah. Um, it's visible from the roads, is my point. It's an eyesore. So especially in the areas near the roads, like the tee box on 16, right. um, around the lake on 16, um, the tee box on 10, just the obvious areas that you can see from the road. I mean, the roadways. those need to be maintained. Priority I mean, first. It, it doesn't have to be every day. If we did it once a month, it wouldn't look like it does now. Oh, we do it more once a month. I mean, as far as... Well, these haven't been done more than once a month. These, it's really long around these tee boxes. Unless it's growing it is, yeah. 12 right. inches a month. Well, it's the heat, too. Yeah. It is. So. But it's a little ratty, so we just need to clean it up. Okay, that's it, John? That's all I have. Okay, Jeff? Well, first off, uh, thank you for, you know, helping me out in this kind of a trying situation. And as you can tell from John going for his back surgery, we've kind of been mashing and putting it together here. But, um, you know, as far as the golf course, uh, both the Tylers, and the rest of the staff here in the pro shop has done a wonderful job 
and I wanted to be a demeaning person, but I had a few stomach issues this morning, so uh, I decided to stay here in my office to do the meeting. Um, through uh, the 27th through the day, it looks like uh, June is going to come in right at budget, and May came in over budget, so we're looking to continue the success we've had revenue-wise. Um, I did send you guys an email um, last week that kind of showed a temporary idea of what the rate increase would be at 20%. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that kind of increase, but it is one we discussed uh, prior, prior to my medical issues, and I don't know where, where we're at with that if you want to go. 10 or 20% increase. You know, 20% increase is rather big, but it will cover all our expenses. Um, as of um, April, April, we're already at 3.1 million. This is on a path to get to um, probably somewhere around 3.5 to 3.6 million. Just considering what we're doing about Two seven two eight for COVID it puts us in a pretty good spot. Um, we had a success weekend and everything seems to be going pretty good here in South Park. Jeff, what's the difference between a league and a group? Well, the league would be um, a, 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 um, a league would they pay. Uh, for the competition here in the golf shop, meaning that they have gift certificates, um, they pay usually, well, paying on the lead, but they usually pay in the golf shop, well, they do pay in the golf shop, and they have credit here in the golf shop. Um, that's the difference between a league and a group. And the league has a little bit less rate um, because they have bigger organizations. Like uh, Saturday, um, well, what I'm Wednesday, getting, and, uh, yeah, what I'm getting at is how many people are in a group? You have to have uh, what constitutes a group? What it, constitutes a group? 12 players or 60 players? 16, 16 or more. And then uh, we've never really capped the top end. But that's something we considered and talked about the last couple of weeks. Is, is, uh, Capping the top end of the group. Can you put together something for us that shows us how many leagues and how many groups we have? Yeah, Absolutely. We have, a, we, have a, we have an email database with all the minutes and we can do That's that. That's <laughs> Sorry, we have a little animal right around. <laughs> an animal? Yeah, a there's, bug. A, there's a bug. Um, Running yeah. across the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you can put that together for us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Um, how many we'll back to work on, uh, how many, Thursday. how many leagues do we have and how many groups do we have? We have three, um, leagues and I think about 10 or 11 groups. Playing how often? Tyler, does that sound right? more of the groups. How often do the groups play? Uh, some play twice a week, some play once a week, depending. Okay. So I know that there's, we, a, there's a Friday morning men's group. Um, so like in the summer right now, we have a men's group on fr Friday morning, and we have um, one little group going off Tuesday mornings, but that's it in the summer. In the summer, but okay. I know. In, in season. In summer. I don't think summer is any question at all. We want as many people playing golf for whatever dollars we can bring in. I think the question is about January through April. Right. Yeah. Um, how much, how many opportunities are we losing with full tee time cost? Right. By allowing groups and events and leagues. I would, I would, I would say this to you guys. I understand exactly what you're saying and I'm 100% behind it. And we'll do the best we can to accommodate it. Remember, these groups and leagues 
when we had the lean year, these are the people who, who kept us in business and put us in and kept us there. So before we, my grandma used to say, cut our heads off to uh, shake us to, to besides our body. Um, we, we need to be cautious for what's happening. We need to know exactly what's going on. I mean, I know you guys want to do this, and I understand it 100%, but some of these groups and some of these leagues have brought us through some pretty lean times over the years, and we want to be able to be gracious them in case, you know, five years from now, this whole um, golf boom might reverse. So I don't want to cut our heads off to spite our, to cut our nose off to spite our face. That was what she used to say. Right. I'm tired of that. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jeff, I think what we need to do is, I think with the, um, the leagues, you are limiting the numbers to try and open up more um, outside tea times. And with the groups, um, yeah. let's just assure that the right amount of people are coming in. And I do think we need to raise the prices for the groups and the leagues. And I guess they have supported us. Yeah, you got it. They support us. You got to get the rate. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And so a 20% increase would, would be healthy. I mean, it's depending on what you guys want to do. You didn't tell me. Okay, Adam. It would be 20%, it be 10. Okay, Adam, what is your opinion? Yeah. So, I, know yeah, I, think, I think the 20%, the 20% across the board, I'm all okay with that. And I know that there was a conversation earlier as to what is need, what is group. Uh, Jack and I have done some work, and 